during this NWSL offseason. It is the first official offseason in which there is a free agency period in the league. Speaking a little bit about, uh, you know, the, the CBA, the collective bargaining agreement already in reference to the expansion group. This is in reference to free agency players who have had six or more years of, of, of service within the league um, officially free agents. Uh, there was a, a discrepancy at one point. They had to go to arbitration to actually get the official list. But since then, there has been some news. So this is this is interesting for you and I, Lisa, to sort of talk about and bring on the show right here, because what we have so far is really just a lot of players resigning with their mm -hmm. their current their former and now still current clubs I, we just had a really great interview with uh Rain wilkinson the head coach of portland thorns and we chatted a little bit about how somebody like christine sinclair announced with enthusiasm her return to portland and was targeted as one of those you know po potential big name free agents right but said hey i'm gonna come back for another year with Portland, try to win another one of these trophies. Um, and it'll be her 11th season with the Thorns, yeah. a player who has been with that, that franchise since their inaugural season in, in 2013. But that's that's really been the trend so far. We've seen players negotiating with their current clubs, and it remains still their current club. We saw Sophie Schmidt, another one of these play players, a Canadian compatriot of, of Christine Sinclair, ink a two-year deal with Houston Dash. Uh, so again, player like Schmidt, big name target perhaps on free agency, but staying, staying in Houston. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of players that have re-upped their contracts with their current clubs. With Gotham, it's Ifio Manamanu, Taylor Smith, Mandy Freeman. Um, you, you touched on Christine Sinclair, and this isn't surprising at all because those players that have been with their clubs consistently, you talked about Christine Sinclair. She's been with the Thorns since 2013. Um, why would she go anywhere else? That's her home. So I, I imagine the first wave of news we'll hear from these free agents is that they're re-signing with their individual clubs. Now, of course, there's a lot of negotiation Negotiations and contract discussions that come with that because these players now have the option and the freedom to negotiate their own salaries with what they want. But the, the free agency list is incredibly long. And I am really excited to see some of the big names maybe take moves, see where they can get a little bit more money or play with a different style of soccer that they're looking to play or just get out of a market to shake things up and advance themselves as players because the list of free agency players is really, really big. I mean, there's players like Dabinha, midfielder with North Carolina Courage, Brazilian international. I'd be shocked if NC Courage doesn't look to keep Dabinha at, at that club. I mean, she is their midfield. We'll she, went on, she went on a tear at the end of the year. But, hey, if if the offer is not right for Dabinha, like, I could see that move happening. Um, you yeah. look at uh, some players like Julie Ertz, Tobin Heath. Like, what are they going to do in this free agency? Julie Ertz was – with Chicago, traded to Angel City, but she's been on maternity leave, had a baby. I, I, I could see her never even stepping foot in L.A. to play with Angel City, um, depending on, on what happens there. Um, there's a lot of Chicago Red Stars players, Sandra, that are on mm -hmm. this list as as free agents. You look at Vanessa DiBernardo, Danielle mm -hmm. Colaprico, um, Morgan Gattral. These are players that have been with Chicago for a pretty long time. Yuki Nagasato, she was in of racing Louisville, then she's back in Chicago. I mean, there's just a lot that can happen uh, with this free agency list. But as of right now, no crazy moves have happened. It's all been players re-upping their contracts yeah. at their respective clubs where they are right now. I think we'll we'll see the break, you know, eventually. Um, I think folks are waiting for those those big signings or the the big move, right? The the player that might make the the leap to a new club or or otherwise, and it'll probably happen in, in the next, you know, 10 days or so, I believe. It's a negotiating period right now, and that's what we're seeing. We're, 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 we're seeing players who want, who obviously want to re-up with their current clubs, go through those negotiations, you know, and, and sign those contracts. But the announcement for if you're going to sign with a new club is not going to happen until November 15th. So I would imagine that any of the negotiating that's going on right now between players mm -hmm. and potentially new clubs, we're not going to get that information until that deadline. So that's already been um, that's already been written in ink. Right. So the deadline yeah. has already been there. So it's like we're going to just sort of have to 
do this uh, this this sort of wait and see approach right we're doing the news and epi- uh, news and notes episode and we're talking about the information um that's in front of us but i'm i'm with you i think as of right now in terms of just sort of hearing all the names remaining on that list the uh, davinia is is target number 1 i mean this is a player that has had ties to yeah you know global clubs you know i i this is a player i think uh, people anticipated at one point perhaps was was going to to go overseas, you know, and, and play play in a different uh, play in a different organization um, in Europe specifically. So um, I'm with you. I think I think the media is probably the prime target there. I I would anticipate that North Carolina is trying to do um, everything they could possibly do to ensure that they they keep this player. Um, you know, with them in, in North Carolina, but it's, it's all going to depend. That's the beauty of free agency, right? Yeah. Everything, sort of, everything sort of has to line up the right opportunity, the length of time, the dollar amount, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it's exciting for us because there we've never really had a free agency period to sort of cover like this. So I'm excited to sort of see how it comes down. I'm really, I'm really just keeping an eye on November 15th. You know, I would imagine that everything, you know, that's been being discussed right now behind the scenes up to this point will eventually you know get its announcement either late late you know november 14th or very early uh november 15th so everybody keep an eye out we will as well but uh, you know it's not just players who are making movement throughout the league we've got some some coaching updates to to talk about as well gonna shout out uh theo lloyd hughes with the with the breaking out of championship weekend about uh, Houston Dash and New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. It was rumored and reported that Juan Carlos Amoros was going to make a move, and then it was made, it was announced officially that he is now no longer the head coach of Houston Dash, but the head coach of Gotham FC. And you know, maybe incorrect phrasing, right? He was he was interim head coach. Right with Houston dash and perhaps maybe the assumption in an off season is that there's going to be negotiations directly with the club that you're currently with, even as interim and, and sort of see what comes out of that. But uh, Gotham striking, striking first, striking early. I mean, when I first saw that Juan Carlos Amoros was leaving Houston, right? That's how the news cycle kind of happened. It was reported that he wasn't coming back to Houston as the head coach, um, as the interim manager, which is how he finished the year leading Houston to a fourth place finish on the table, their first ever NWSL playoff appearance. Um, And he had been in Houston for a bit of time as a coach. And that's kind of how he slotted into that interim head coach role. And I was really impressed with what he did with Houston and the dash and and leading them to the playoffs. But this move of him going to Gotham, um, I suspect that it was, it was a pretty good deal for him not to, not to turn down because this Gotham side is one that went on a 12 game losing streak at the end of the year under Scott Parkinson, who, who left in the middle of the season towards the end of the season, Hugh Menzies, former Jamaican international coach stepped in, but it was always pretty, clear from Gotham that Menzies wasn't going to be the full-time head coach moving forward. It was more of just a solution to finish out the season this year in 2022. So now that they're having Juan Carlos Amoros as the new head coach, a three-year contract at Gotham, um, this is a Gotham side that wants to turn things around. They don't want to go on breaking losing streak records next year. They have good players, but how do they turn that around? And they really have to do that. Just 13 points to end this this year. Uh, One win, 17 losses and four draws for Gotham this year. If anyone can do it, I think it's Juan Carlos Samaros. Um, I like this this for him, but that means now that Houston is looking for a head coach. Orlando still looking for a head coach. Washington Spirit yeah. still looking for a head coach. I mean, yeah. these conversations are, are never ending about who's going to step in and, and lead these teams next year. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll see what happens um, in Houston. You know, perhaps it was a little bit of a blurry or grayed area in terms of the, the dash franchise um, and the possibility of having negotiations for a head coach when there currently is no news or update on James Clarkson, who has been placed on administrative leave since um, just ahead of the regular season in 2022. Um and we'll see what comes comes out of that. Uh, I believe, if memory serves me correct, people can stat check me on this. Um, 
the initial coaching contract for Clarkson, I think, expires in, in yeah. December. So perhaps maybe there's a little bit of a waiting game um, right now if you're if you're the Houston Dash in terms of trying to target um, a potential new head coach, right? But I, I would hope that a, perhaps a franchise like um, the Pride are maybe having conversations with with Seb Hines. I thought they did some good things, and and we'll see. And we've also uh, seen that while there's not a head coach uh, named yet in Washington for the spirit. They did make a pretty big hire uh, in Don Scott, who was recently named their director of performance, medical and innovation. Big, big name. If you follow the United yeah. States women's national team for the last two cycles, Don Scott responsible for all of the, the training and performance and medical uh, evaluations for, for the U S WNT during their world cup cycles. So big, big hire there. Huge. I mean, she was with the U.S. Women's National Team, English Women's National yeah. Team, FIFA, UEFA, MLS. Uh, she was at Inter Miami CF of MLS, um, overseeing first team MLS Next Pro. Like she has a plethora of experience at this level, and I think this is such a big, big hire for Washington Spirit because um, it's the first ever, right, for Washington Spirit Director of Performance, Medical, and Innovation, uh, which is steps in the right direction for this Washington Spirit Club to kind of hire someone like Don Scott into this position. Uh, but hey, now they need a head coach, right? It's great to have this type of director of performance in the first ever role. And and who better else to hire besides Don Scott? Um, kind of yeah. see how the, it turns this team around. But it sets a bar a little yeah, bit. It does. Like you, ha you have the spirit, the franchise making this, this hire in Don Scott. I'm sure folks are going to say, well, if this is where you're going with this position, who's going to fill the role of head coach? We will see additional news uh, on the coaching side for Gotham FC. Shout out to Jackie Gutierrez from Women Kick Ball. Just saying that uh, Bev Yanez is also on the move as well. We could potentially actually see uh, the assistant coach coming out of Gotham and with a new side in 2023. Again, something else that we'll have to keep an eye on. Off season continues. 